Hello, art teachers. My name is Abby Shukai, and today I'm going to take you along with me as we go on a day in the life of a middle school art teacher. I have been teaching art since 2012, so over 10 years now, and I currently teach seventh and eighth graders. I am going to be taking you along today, um, showing you a glimpse of what some of my classes are doing, kind of sharing my setup with you. Before we get going though, I do wanna tell you this. I am not an organized person by any means, so when we get going on our classroom adventure, it's gonna be real. So you're gonna see what, what the real classroom looks like inside of here. Okay, so it's about 7.25. I am working on making some coffee here, which is just part of my morning routine. This is the part of my day where I get to kind of catch up, get ready for the day, drink my coffee, finish my breakfast, you know, put my lunch away for the day. So just kind of a time for us to regroup. So the coffee's brewing and I have a first period class that um, is eighth grade art and I will make sure to check in with all of you after that. Okay, so let's talk about my schedule a little bit. I had my homeroom students come in and then I had my first period class, which is a eighth grade art class. So while I'm back there helping students who are throwing on the wheel, I have students working on here on some color mixing and color theory things. So after that, um, second period plan. So it is about 8.45 now and I am in my second hour plan. So I get two plan periods during the day. After that then I teach two seventh grade classes and my seventh grade classes are set up in such a way that I see all of the seventh graders in the building on a seven week rotation. So when those students come in, I see them every day, but they're only in here for seven weeks. So the things that we do, they are down to the day to kind of get things in because the time just goes super, super fast. After that, all of my other classes for the day are eighth grade classes. And with that, my eighth grade classes are semester long classes. I'm gonna go ahead and show you some of the things that we're doing, showing show you some of the things in my classroom and just give you some, hopefully some tips and tricks along the way. All right, let's take a look at my classroom. So this is the entrance as you walk through into the door. You can see that we kind of have some rooms within rooms. Okay, we are walking into one of my multi-purpose storage rooms and this room can be a little scary. Um, I use it for storage as well as students use it to take photos and things like that. I also have this fancy <laughs> projector, um, old school overhead projector that we use for tracing tables and things like that. One of the things that I always also kind of have set up is a little photo area set up. Students were drawing cans from observation. Super easy for students to come back and take really great photos. It's one of my favorite things to use. A tip for observational drawing is crush the cans, spray paint them, and you're gonna come up with some really, really awesome drawings and you get all of those shades and cracks and things in there. On this side of the room, I like to call it the wall of art things past. Some of these are old projects. Some of things are just old resources. Um, but every once in a while, if students need a little inspiration or I need some project ideas, I'll just come back and look at the wall of inspiration and we can come up with some ideas. Probably one of the most used things in here by myself and my students is this light box. I will use it to record instructional videos for my students. And then when students take, um, they finish their projects, they come in and they use the light box to take photos. This is probably one of the scariest rooms as far as all of the stuff and that's just the way that I am. So this room is connected off of my main room. So as you walk in, I have a couple of throwing wheels. This is where I keep my glazes um, organized with numbers. Here are where we keep those in progress works. We have all of the clay that has just arrived. We have the reclaim bin where students dump their stuff from throwing on the wheel and eventually this will fill up and we will recycle it. 
cabinets, clay tools over here, and then we have the slab roller over here, which students use. This is where I have my glazed test tiles that correspond with those numbers so students know what to look for. Here are the clay boxes that students are using. So they have tools inside of them. So this is for table number two. All of these things are labeled with the number two as well. Behind this door is a scary storage area. I use it to store kind of those items that we don't use all the time. That's our mural paint and wall paint, things like that. And then I actually have this bicycle back here that we use for still life props. This was kind of the scary back room that no one really needs to venture into. So by far, one of the best features of my classroom is that each student has their own individual um, storage cabinet. It makes my job a lot easier because they are basically um, storing everything and they keep most of their materials that they're using in here. One of the first activities that I do with them, so we do a sketchbook activity and I just ask students to draw a hand. And then from there, I only give them like, you know, seven, maybe 10 minutes. And then from there we build up and we do contour drawing activities and it's really funny for students to try some of those out and create some of those lovely drawings that you know they laugh at. But it's a really great drawing exercise for them to see how much they can improve in a little, a very short amount of time. There are some really great handouts I got from a pro learning pack with the Art of Education University about drawing hands. We walk through this activity of drawing the human hand. This little diagram here does a really great job of showing that. And then when we start about talk about shading and value, this um, handout that showcases how, you know, a finger is basically just cylinders. So those are some of the things that you'll see students practicing in their sketchbook, which is pretty awesome. But then we do just kind of a quick three-day project of drying the hand, applying shading, and they get to just create a different background. So like this student already did a pretty good job of drawing the hand in the very first one, but then this was the second one. So it's really awesome to be able to do kind of a pre-post test right away within the first week of the rotation. So that's one of my favorite lessons to start with. and. Um, it's just, it's just a really great way to kind of see where your students are at already. So one of the other things that's a daily occurrence in my classroom is students are responsible for hanging up their own artwork. And so I have two places that students get to do that and I'm gonna show them to you. So the first one is a display case. The second location that we hang things is on a bulletin board. And so here is what that bulletin board might look like. You can see that both in the display case and in the bulletin board, things might be hung up a little wonky, um, but that's because students are responsible for it. They're taking ownership in what they're doing that way. And um, it's just a really great way to re-emphasize some of those national um, standards with your students about presenting artwork. Okay, another fun area that I have in my classroom is my wall of school photos. As you can tell, I don't like to take um, picture day too seriously. I always have to have a new outfit, props, just always looking for the next adventure. Okay, let's talk about what my eighth graders are working on. So I have students throwing on the wheel, and then I have students painting and working on color theory. So when I'm throwing on the wheel with students because it needs to divide my attention. Students will be working on activities out here in the main room, um, kind of at a self pace. And I like to do something that requires kind of a lot of thinking and maybe a little bit more work so that they're engaged and they're staying busy. So color theory is the perfect thing for that. So as we started that, the very first thing that we did is we actually did a pretest, and I, give my students the pretest, and I start handing out papers and they're like, oh, why are we taking a test? But this is the style of pretest that we use. This is actually an assessment resource from Flex Curriculum that's come in really handy. And all it's asking students, um, you know, what are the three primary colors? What are the warm colors? And they have to try to identify those. And you can see that some of those students just don't get it and that's okay. That's the purpose of this. And I tell the students, we're gonna do this again. By the time we're done with all this, 
hopefully you'll know all these things. And it just really is a great tool for me to know what students need. I know the color wheel is not super, super interesting, but holy smokes, kids need to know how to mix colors. This is from Flex Curriculum that just really allows students to dive into the color wheel, creating tints and shades and all of that. So the basic setup that I do for this is I have little bags of paint that are stored over by the sink. And when students come in for their class period, they take their bag, they use, for right now, we are just using a plate and baggy system. And these, all of these things, except for these bags, are stored in their bin for students to pull out and use. I have bigger containers of paint that we'll use for different things, but with color mixing, these tubes are my favorite things to use just because they're smaller. It encourages students to use just a little bit. And I think it's so important um, for students to understand warm and cool color bias. So like, you know, there's a warm color red and a cool color red. We are going to be diving into some more guided painting activities before we dive into acrylic paint techniques and they just really get to let loose. All right, I'm checking in here. It is about 12.30. So I finished up the bulk of my classes for the day. So far, I still have a couple of left. So I had my first period eighth grade class and then my seventh grade classes with the planned period mix in there. And then I had another eight hour class. And now I just had my homeroom in class again. I'm going to lunch, so. We're gonna go do that, we're gonna go to lunch, and then um, I have one more plan period, and then I'm gonna finish the day off strong with two more eighth grade classes. Okay, so I just wanted to share a little bit more about throwing on the wheel with the students. Um, it is not a requirement that I give for students. I just want to make sure that they have the opportunity to do it. I'm helping two different students on the wheel and I try to be as hands off as possible only when they ask, you know, hey, is this centered? Can you check to see the thinness and things like that? And both of these students that you, um, any of the students that you're seeing working and throwing on the wheel, they, this was all their very first time doing it and it's really challenging. One of the specific students was a life skills student who is integrated into the classroom and I absolutely love working with him. And so he needed a little bit more hand over hand instruction to kind of get the feel of it. I just wanted to show you something that was super cool. So my student who was in the life skills classroom made this first piece all he this was more of my assistance you know it's a little small piece but he was enjoying the process so much and he was just kept saying oh this is sick this is awesome and just kept going and it was really fun to hear him say that um but then you know it was time class was kind of getting closer to the end and i was like do you want to keep going he's like yeah i want to do another one so i did not help him at all with this second piece um he just went for it and oh my gosh, I am so impressed. It is so awesome, so cool. It's so awesome to see students find success in that way. And that's all I want them to do, to have that opportunity to do that. You know, this might be the only time that they get to throw on the wheel. So I wanna give it to them if they can. And it's really fun for me. Yes, my back is probably gonna hurt um, from bending over all the time. And I definitely have clay all over my feet and there's Mm, messes everywhere, but you know, what can we do? Okay, so it is about 310 students have left the building and I'm about to do the same. So thanks for coming along on this day with me. I hope that you were able to get some tips and tricks along the way. Um, I know that I I'm kind of organized chaos. We can all relate to this. At the end of the day, I got clay everywhere. Um, I probably have some in my hair, who knows? But um, it was a good day, exciting day. There was no like major issues, which was pretty awesome. Throughout the day, throughout the video, I shared some resources that I was using, some resources that were specific from the Art of Education University, like Pro and Flex. So definitely make sure to check out those links um, below in the comments. I hope that you enjoyed this day 
and come back for more of these day in the life of an art teacher. And don't forget to subscribe to the Art of Education University on YouTube and follow them on all of their social media platforms because there's always something really awesome to learn. So thank you so much for coming along with me today and I hope you all have a great day.